can start again. If you don't mind. Okay. Whoever you want to pick up. Okay. Joseph Ritchie Hospice opened in 1987. After eight years of um, very long, hard work, it was the idea of Mother Catherine Grace, an All Saints sister um, in Catonsville, Maryland, who was concerned about those who were dying in their homes and had no one to take care of them. And so it was really opened initially thinking that the whole establishment would be a volunteer endeavor. But when she realized that people who were dying needed 24-hour care and professional care, um, we moved into another whole process. And um, at this point, when we, they first opened, there were 12 beds. About four years ago, we enlarged, and we now have 20 beds inpatient, and we have a home care program. Um, we are staffed with nurses around the clock. Our philosophy is to celebrate life, unusually, whereas um, people think of hospices as a place where they're coming to die. I think our patients look at coming here, or once they get here, they know they're coming here to celebrate life. We focus on keeping people pain-free. We do not use um, any IVs and all our medication is by mouth or other means that would not be abusive and intrusive, I guess I want to say. Um, and our staff is a very dedicated 24-hour staff that um, cares for people lovingly, I think. What do you think? What else can I say? Well, can you talk a little bit more about the, um, what you told me in the hallway there about the the priest who brought the nuns over from England? Oh, it was named, Joseph Ritchie was named after the rector of Mount Calvary Church, which is on the corner from these buildings. And back in the 1870s, he brought the All Saints Sisters over from England and took care for the sick and dying in Baltimore. Um, one of the buildings is named after one of the sisters that came over, the Brownlow Byron Building. And the, the um, hospice itself was named after Joseph Ritchie, who was the rector at that time. And the All Saints Sisters um, have really been an inspiration to us. And are really, it is the spirit that they give us that makes Joseph Ritchie, I think, different from most places. And um, our focus is to be a home to those who are dying. Um, and so we have made our buildings representing homes. All the rooms are individual rooms. Every patient has their own room. Um, we, are, we staff ourselves heavily so that their needs are always cared for. I don't know what else I should say. I'm not, I'm not good at... Uh, <laughs> what kind of work do you do? You, you, you represent the whole hospital. I'm the executive director. Okay. Okay, I do also happen to be a nurse and a social worker. And so I do a lot of filling in <laughs> where there are laughs and where people need help. Um, it's an exciting place. Though we are small, I think we are very exciting to work in. There's always new challenges, new things coming along. And um, um, so we're always learning new things and, and doing new things, but our care is very basic. And, um, and our motto is really to keep life very simple so that people really can celebrate and enjoy their lives. And they do that. And they do that. Mm -hmm. Do you have grounds here as well? Or? We have a little tiny garden. We are in the city. Mm -hmm. um, in the next two years, we, in t we have four buildings to the north of us that are the, uh, a continuation of the row houses that we are in. And we will be opening a pediatric inpatient unit in a pediatric pro pro program which um, will also care for children in their homes. Um, and the, our offices, which are down the street in buildings that are not ours, will be moved up next to the um, pediatric hospice. And that's a very exciting venture yes, because there are no inpatient pediatric hospices east of the Mississippi and there's actually only one in the United States which is being built now just outside of San Francisco. And so that's um, a new and exciting venture. We've been planning it for 10 years. And um, 
we're ready to move with rehabbing the, hospital, the uh, buildings. When do you think that will take place? When do you think you'll be able to receive your first patient? As an inpatient, we've already done that. We've snuck them in <laughs> and put them in an adult room. But um, I would imagine in a year, year and a half, that building will be open and up and running. That's wonderful. It's, it is exciting. It's an exciting thing. And how many more? Okay. Um, my name is Michelle Brazil, a registered nurse, and I work at Joseph Ritchie Hospice. Um, Joseph Ritchie is an exciting place to work at as a nurse because you really have a sense of reward coming in every day and helping the patients that we care for. Before coming to Joseph Ritchie, um, you, I had a preconceived idea that hospice nurses was a depressing job, and when you talk to other individuals and you tell them what you do for a living, um, hospice nurse is something that they say, oh, that's got to be sad, that's got to be depressing. In fact, I find it to be the opposite, is one of the most rewarding jobs that I could ever think of endeavoring in. Um, all of the nurses and myself work around the clock. We each work eight-hour shifts, and there's a nurse here 24 hours a day. We um, have three nursing assistants on shift every shift and therefore are able to care for the patients in a way that nails get painted and hair gets done and all that fun stuff that normally wouldn't get done in a hospital. We really want the patients to be happy here and that often includes relieving symptoms of their disease which often include a lot of pain, sometimes nausea, um, constipation, anything that you could possibly think of that is related to the disease that they have, um, we are going to be there to help relieve that. We are very aggressive with pain management and strive within 24 hours to relieve that person of their pain. As Ruth was saying, um, we don't give anything by IV, we give everything by mouth or in the side of their cheek or other ways that are not invasive. It's a wonderful comfort to the patients when they come here to know that they're not going to be having to have needle sticks, they're not going to have to have blood drawn, they're not going to have to have IM medication. Um, they've had enough of that and that sense of relief to them is often a wonderful feeling. They know that they're here to live the best of their life out and we try very hard for them to be able to do that. We have wonderful nurses here and the best nursing assistants and together we work as a team. We have pastoral care, we have two social workers and any time anybody's in need of emotional or spiritual support along with their physical support all of us together are able to meet those needs of each and every one of the patients.